Okay, this lesson is about the either hypersecretion or the insufficiency of the hormones released from the adrenal cortex. So what hormones are released from the adrenal cortex? Cortisol, the glucocorticoid, cortisol, aldosterone, that mineralocoid, and the androgens, the third set. But what's important to realize is that they don't just release on their own accord because they're part of the endocrine system, it's based on a feedback. So it receives a signal from the anterior pituitary through a hormone, which is adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACTH. Something that's trophic means gland, gland stimulating, and adrenocortico, so it's about cortisol. So ACTH is what tells that adrenal cortex to stimulate the cortisol hormone. So with either Cushing's or Addison's, you have a disruption of these hormones. So the problem, the disturbance could either be in the organ itself or from the endocrine gland that prompts that organ to release those hormones. And that's important to understand as we talk about the different types of either Cushing's or Addison's. So first let's look at Cushing's disease. So Cushing's disease is when there is a hypersecretion of ACTH from the anterior pituitary, and therefore there's that hypersecretion of cortisol from the adrenal cortex. Now, what is the difference between Cushing's disease and Cushing's syndrome? Cushing's disease, they say for when there is some kind of tumor or something that is prompting that hypersecretion of ACTH, whereas Cushing's syndrome, no, anything that's a syndrome is, means a collection of symptoms. Cushing's syndrome is either from any other source of these elevated hormone levels. Okay, so let's talk about what you see with this patient who is got these Cushingoid features. So remember, cortisol is that stress-induced hormone, meaning in times of stress, it's released from the system. Why? Because we need excess glucose in times of stress to give our body more energy. It also involves the remobilization of fats. It involves the redistribution of protein stores. So it redistributes energy in the system. So one of the cardinal signs of this Cushing-like patient is that they are hyperglycemic. So they have elevated blood sugar all the time. And cortisol, when it is released in uh, abundance is also going to suppress the immune response. So that is the most life-threatening aspect of being this Cushingoid patient is that you don't have the resistance to infection. So hyperglycemia and higher risk for infection. The other less dangerous symptoms are really related to body image disturbance. Because there is the redistribution of fat, the patient takes on that moon face, so the fat kind of deposits on the face. Fat also deposits on the stomach, and you get what's called that truncal obesity. You also get fat on these supraclavicular pads, or also called buffalo hump. So the extremities are thin and frail, redistributed on the trunk, and the patient just takes on this moon face appearance. The cortisol also affects cognition and the patient experiences personality changes, so they're not quite right with all these excess uh, hormones running around. And also what's overlapping in this Cushing patient with the Cushing syndrome is that because cortisol and aldosterone is released from the same organ, you're going to have signs of fluid overload. You're going to have signs of hyperaldosteronism or signs that the patient is retaining more sodium with water following it. So the patient's going to be experiencing a higher blood pressure from that and also an elevated sodium level and aldosterone has a way of elevating sodium because it's reabsorbed in the renal tubule and potassium is wasted. So in this patient that's a cushing white patient, you're going to have a hypernatremia and a hypokalemia. Weight gain is also cardinal. Cortisol does stimulate appetite. Sometimes um, prescribers give it to patients when they want them to eat more. Patients that are cachectic or have cancer, you prescribe, you know, dexamethasone or something so it stimulates appetite. 
Other effects of cortisol is that it could cause um, tearing of the skin because uh, cortisol causes collagen depletion. It causes bruising. It causes osteoporosis because it does demineralize the bones. So it is not um, a safe place to be when you have elevated levels of these hormones. In addition, in females, you're going to take on the secondary sex characteristics of males because of that third set of hormones released from the adrenal cortex, the androgens. So females may get a receding hairline, females may get hair on the face, so fat redistribution is also part of that syndrome, part of that appearance. Okay, so let's look at Addison's disease now, which is the opposite disorder. So remember, if this is a hypersecretion of the hormones that are, released, that are released from this adrenal cortex, Addison's disease is going to be the depletion. So a depletion of cortisol is going to have a patient with hypoglycemia. They're going to have a decreased gluconeogenesis, so that's very cardinal. Along that goes a weakness, a lethargy. Because they have hypoaldosteronism, or they have a depletion in their circulating aldosterone levels because these glands are not secreting it, they're going to be hypotensive. And because they have a decreased reabsorption of aldosterone, that means they're going to be hyponatremic cardinally, and the potassium is going to be reabsorbed. So an opposite fluid and electrolyte imbalances. So that's this patient just kind of lethargic. Also, they could appear with this hyperpigmentation, which does occur when it's primary or when there is a problem with the release of these hormones uh, from the organ itself. And that is because if there is a depletion of cortisol, aldosterone, and, and um, cortisol and aldosterone, then because of this negative feedback loop, the anterior pituitary is going to think that it needs to prompt the gland to release more for the system. So therefore you're going to have the elevated levels of this ACTH trying to get the gland to release it, but really it's insufficient at doing that. And a precursor to this adrenal corticotrophic hormone is melanocyte stimulating hormone. So with primary adrenal insufficiency, you're also going to have this hyperpigmentation. Again, because it's on a feedback and because a precursor to adrenocorticotropic hormone is that melanocyte stimulating hormone, which is going to cause increased melanin and this hyperpigmentation of the skin. Okay, so what is an Addisonian crisis? An Addison's crisis is a profound depletion of these hormones. So what happens is a profound decrease in blood sugar, a profound decrease in blood pressure, and the patient goes into a hypovolemic shock. So they need to be in an ICU setting, receiving dexamethasone or um, cortic some corticosteroid intravenously, uh, and receiving crystalloid fluids to replete that loin that's lost because they have a diminished a bottomed out aldosterone level. So of course the fluid and electrolyte imbalances is going to be even more profound. Although that's life threatening, patients can be in a chronic state of Addison's disease.